Now, a lot of work and certainly planning goes into maintaining our beautiful national parks. And not just on land, but also at sea. There are marine protected areas too, like the coral reefs off South Africa's coast. They form a unique ecosystem which serves many functions, from water purification to coastline protection. They also provide habitats for all kinds of animals and plants. All that makes the reef near Durban well worth protecting. But it also gives scientists valuable insight into how such a sensitive system can be protected from the long-term effects of climate change. This is how corals reproduce and spread. For hundreds of millions of years, they've been building ocean reefs and ensuring their own survival. In Durban, Marine biologists are collecting these sex cells, called gametes, to study their genetic potential. Most corals live in warm tropical waters. In this part of the ocean, natural selection has left only species that can cope with the rough conditions found in the seas around South Africa. So that's a lot of our, our research, is, is trying to figure out what, are the, what is the um, genetic basis of resistance or susceptibility to how our reefs are connected on a genetic level, how, how, what sort of movement of, of larvae and genetic material are we getting, and um, how does that inform our plans to protect. Coral reefs are diverse ecosystems that produce an important habitat and breeding ground for fish and other marine species. In the last few years, global warming has caused coral reefs to bleach and die around the world. Corals are animals that live in symbiosis with an algae. When ocean temperatures get too warm, this relationship breaks down. The algae are expelled, turning the coral white and effectively starving it, like here in the seashells. Reefs in South Africa have mostly been spared, at least so far. Dr. Pearton and his colleagues believe that's down to a genetic disposition that makes them less vulnerable to change in the environment. Our uh, environment is very turbulent and therefore the water mixing is very good so you don't get a layer of warm water uh, uh, sitting at the surface and affecting more the shallow water corals. Um, added to this, the, our corals tend to be a bit deeper. The tropical reefs grow to the surface so this, this all assists the corals to cope better with, with uh, global warming, climate change and coral bleaching. Just as important as the special environmental conditions in South Africa, the strict protection of the country's northeastern coastline. The hope is that this area might provide a breeding refuge for corals that can survive in warmer tropical regions. Here at Cape Vidal in Isimangaliso Wetland Park, James Wood is in charge of marine protection. One of the thinkings by the scientific research and that is possibly um, our corals in South Africa and Isimangalisa could actually benefit by global warming because as the um, water temperatures rise, it then will create a greater area for the corals to extend further south. But warmer temperatures aren't the only factor affecting coral reefs. Another major problem in oceans all over the world is marine pollution. In Durban, one man is thinking ahead. Together with colleagues from around the world, Dr. Pearton is working on cryopreserving coral gametes. For him, they are an insurance policy for biodiversity if worst comes to worst. With corals under such immediate threat, we need to find ways to preserve the diversity that we have Currently, the situation is in, so, in many areas is so uh, dire that we have to start looking at um, uh, solutions like this. It's a race against time. Experts say around half of the planet's coral reefs could die by 2050, taking with them much of the diversity and beauty in the world beneath the waves.